Rachel from 7 and All, and I am so excited about today's video because I am going to be giving you a look inside Alphabet Adventures. This is the new pre-K phonics curriculum um, that me and my family have just released through our small business, Where'd You Learn That Homeschool, and it's the biggest release we've done in a while. This project product has been in the works for many months. So I'm really excited to finally be releasing it and showing it to you guys today. I'll try to answer all the questions you might have about it in this video, but if you have any more questions, please leave me some comments down below and I will be happy to answer them. All right, I wanna jump right into giving you a look inside Alphabet Adventures. Now this is designed for approximately your four-year-old child, your child who is ready to move beyond, you know, very, very gentle um, preschool, like purely preschool that's aimed more at a three-year-old level, and your child who's very curious about the letters of the alphabet and wants to learn more. Now, do note that only part one of Alphabet Adventures is available right now. This is covering the first half of the alphabet from A through M. The reason I'm releasing it in two parts is really just time. I know that many of you are kind of needing this right now, wanting to start it now or wanting to make your plans for homeschool right now. So um, because I knew it would take me a few more months to finish the alphabet, I wanted to go ahead and just release it as part one. It's available right now for $13.99 on my website. Um, affordable pricing is always very, very important to me. It's a big part of the way I want to run my business. So don't see the $13.99 price as uh, it meaning you're not getting very much. I always wanna give you a lot for the price, uh, but do keep in mind that what I'm showing you is not expensive. It is purposely designed to be very affordable. This is the parent guide. So the curriculum, what you're buying consists of a student book and a parent guide. And I'll show you the parent guide so that you can kind of understand the uh, whole curriculum a little bit better. The program consists of four main steps, read, sing, work, and play. So this is a literature-based type of pre-K program. You are you can plan on reading a picture book with your child every day. And you will be reading through three picture books a week if you follow the schedule as designed. Uh, I also include songs integrated into the schedule. And this is because we want to, we want to teach our pre-K age child songs. We want them to learn the traditional songs of childhood, learning through song, just simply learning how to, you know, memorize the lyrics and sing a According to a rhythm is a very excellent skill and we do incorporate some letter learning through singing and then for work that is when you're going to get out the workbook and work through roughly maybe two pages a day in the workbook that can be flexible depending on how many pages you want to do but work is considered part of the program and finally play which might be more of a hands-on activity or a flashcard game that is scheduled uh, for every week that you're gonna be playing with flashcards. I do have a FAQs page here for if you have any questions that explains some of the intentional choices made in this program. Then I include no prep extensions for any book. Always when we are doing our reading step, the step of reading with our kids, and we want, we're wanting our kids to learn, my goal is not just to pick up a book, read it, and put it down. You know, we, we always want to be asking questions, engaging it, reading with our kids rather than just reading to our kids. But that doesn't mean you have to have a really complicated sensory bins and lots of materials. And you, you don't have to make literature-based learning, theme-based learning very complicated. So I include just some simple extension activities that you can do with learn, reading any book. You, it can extending the learning of a book can be anything from you know asking your child to point out the target letter on a page to acting out a scene from the story to playing I spy there are many many ways you can extend the learning from a book without uh, without a lot of drama without a lot of materials and preparations I do have book lists I have the book list for the one core book for each unit that you're scheduled to read three times during that week. And then I have an ABC themed book list. If you read the notes, 
it does not matter what ABC books you get. I scheduled to read one ABC book a week just as constant review and constant exposure to the alphabet and to the different vocabulary words that um, ABC books are very, very rich with so that you're kind of getting a review of the whole alphabet every week by reading just one alphabet book and you know, pull from your collection. You probably have a handful of ABC books in your book on your bookshelf. I would be surprised if you didn't because I feel like most people end up with several of these. Um, but pull them from your library, whatever you have. You can have a different one every week. You could have just five or six that you rotate through during the course, whatever works for you. And then because the theme of our whole study is adventure, you are supposed to read one adventure themed book a week. And again, pull from what you have, but I did include a adventure themed book list to just kind of show a wide variety of adventurous picture books that are out there that all have some kind of theme of kids having adventures in them. And I do include a list of flashcard games. Now kind of the resources, I, I highly recommend you take, if you buy this, you take the time to read through the front matter. I think it will help you understand how it works quite a bit. And I tried to make these resources very rich and useful for you. Um, but when you get to the weekly schedules, it will kind of make more sense. So let's look at a one week schedule. We have our read, sing, work and play steps right there. At the top, we can see what our learning objectives are. Our core picture book for the week is Are You an Ant by Judy Allen. We have uh, songs scheduled to listen to during the week. One of the songs is always a classic children's song, like, you know, just like one of those classic songs of childhood. The other, I have linked in here the Sesame Street podcasts for each letter of the alphabet. You don't, if you have a different um, person or creator or brand of alphabet song go, that you really like, just go ahead and use those. I like the Sesame Street podcast, but there are so many choices in English. So go ahead and use whatever, <laughs> whatever your preferred, your child's preferred kind of brand of letter song is. Um, then I do include an action. This is totally optional, but if you want to have little physical kinesthetic actions to do when you're reviewing the letter sounds, you can teach this to your child. I also include a handicraft idea. And my version of giving you instructions for a handicraft, you can see, is very, very simple. I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who enjoys or needs, you know, photographs and a whole lot of step-by-step -step instructions because I'm probably going to do it my own way anyways. <laughs> Um, so I give you very, very simple um, instructions for doing a handicraft with your child. A, an idea for a very simple field trip right here. And that's going to be different for each week. It's always connecting to the letter sound. So we have applesauce for ah, ah. We have an ant hill. And then you can see how it plays out in the schedule. For day one, you're reading your book for the week. You're singing your Ants Came Marching song. You do one to two activity pages in the book. I think there are about eight to 10 activity pages for each letter of the alphabet. So probably most days, if you wanna do them all, you'll do about two. And then for your play, you're gonna build the letter and you can use whatever materials. Maybe you'll make it with Play-Doh or blocks or cars. Whatever materials you have, you can build the letter. Adventure, finding the letter in real life. Um, this is where I'm always going to be encouraging you go out and find the letter You know go look at your DVD collection and see if you can find the letter a anywhere um, My son loves to do kind of scavenger hunts for letters Every week I suggest playing a flashcard game and there's a whole page explaining that Choose handicraft or field trip on Thursday and then build the letter again choose a different material on Friday And then you can see the same thing kind of repeats from week to week but you'll have different opportunities. This time, instead of a handicraft, we have more of a science experiment. We're gonna practice making a boat, you know, having a little plastic food container to be a boat. We're gonna practice seeing which objects sink and float in water, and what's gonna happen if we try to put something that sinks inside a boat? Is it gonna float? So just a little exploration there. So we're not just simply doing letters. It is, it is an interdisciplinary style of learning. We're getting to read books, experience literature. We're getting to do handicrafts, okay? We're gonna make, make something out of clay. You could have a specific project in mind with your letter C clay. Maybe you're making a cat face out of clay. 
but you could also just let it be an open-ended creative experience, which is something I really like when doing crafts with young children. And here's a field trip. My boys would go crazy for this, go to a car wash. Um, the car wash is one of the most exciting places we go to <laughs> with young boys. So I hope that this gives you a good idea of what you can expect from the parent guide right there. And remember this is just part one, so this is only gonna be going through the first half of the alphabet for now. And in the teacher's guide, I recommend, and this, this might be a little bit controversial, but I recommend actually using very simple flashcards without the beautiful watercolor animal illustrations on the flashcard. And this is from my own experience of teaching my son because I've recognized he is very smart and he quickly learned he can say ah, ah, alligator because he sees a picture of an alligator, not because he's looking at the shape of the letter. And I learned that with um, flashcards that have clue words on them and using those for games that he was really um, paying a lot of attention to the pictures and kind of definitely using those as a crutch which that can be useful those those have their place but for flashcards that are now we're at now that we're at their stage of really really trying to master the letters of the alphabet I wanted just plain flashcards and I do recommend using these. So I made this set. There's uppercase and lowercase separated so that you can play matching games. And they are the boringest, simplest flashcards you can find. These are available in the freebies section of my website. So even if you're not doing alphabet adventures, but you want some simple flashcards, you can go ahead and download these. And if you want some color integrated into these, it's as simple as print them on a colored sheet of paper. You know, pick some nice, pretty light blue or green or yellow or whatever color you like, print them on colored paper and they're still low ink, cost effective and not distracting, but you could get some color that way. Now, the student book. So this is, this is a big file. This is about 137 pages for the first half, for this part one, the first half of the alphabet. And you're scheduled to do roughly one to two pages every day. You can adjust it based on how much your child loves worksheets, of course. Um, and I'm gonna show you. There are gonna be um, quite a few pages in here that will be exactly normal and what you would expect from a learn the alphabet um, type of worksheet curriculum. But there are definitely some, some worksheets, some activities throughout this that are a lot more, I would say, unique, unexpected, and add some interactivity. So our first unit, we actually don't start out straight with the letter A. We start out by talking about um, pictures as representations of sounds. And we have some activities with this, with pictures and associating sounds with different pictures. And we actually do that by talking about the sounds that animals make. Uh, and so that, you know, you can do, do this in one day if your child really grasps, grasps the idea very quickly, or you can spend more time on it, thinking about how when you see different pictures, you can recognize that picture, that symbol, represents a sound. And then in unit two, we start the letter A. And so you'll be able to, you, you can always pause and read you know, what to expect. This is our intro page for each letter is gonna be pretty similar. I do have some similar pages repeated throughout, but this is not the same 10 pages repeated for every letter of the alphabet. It's not that. Um, you will see that in like the Explode the Code series, the um, Get Ready for the Code, where it's the same kind of uh, p pages for every single letter every single week. I uh, There's a lot of benefit to repeating some of these same activities and some activities are repeated every week, but it's not gonna be the exact same 10. There's always gonna be some kind of little element of surprise. That one got turned over. So here's our um, just building awareness of the formation of the letter. In this one, I have an ant here, so you can cut out the ant and you walk the ant along the paths used to make the letter, and that is repeated throughout. Then it's also said, it also suggests here, save this page, maybe put it in a page protector, and use it throughout the week to build the letter repeatedly. Use different materials to build it. We have, you know, this is more of a standard uh, activity which is just color pictures that begin with the ah sound and cross out pictures that don't begin with the ah sound. 
You, you will notice with our illustration style, we purposely choose all black and white illustrations and more realistic style of illustrations. I am kind of more on that side of not really enjoying the super cartoonish style. I like realistic style. I find that my sons really enjoy realistic styled illustrations. Um, so we do use that purposefully and it is black and white for a purpose too. It is much more affordable to print this curriculum than it would be to print a colored curriculum, a curriculum that's very heavy on colorful ink. So it's not a boring curriculum even if it's black and white. There are plenty of quality. <laughs> we can still have all the quality without necessarily having bright colors everywhere. We have an ant hill searching for letters activity. We do not do a whole lot of uh, handwriting instruction in this. I think there can be a big range by the time you're four years old, by the time you're really interested in learning letters. Some kids are able to learn how to write at that stage. Many kids are not yet able. And there's so many handwriting curriculums that just focus on handwriting. I would prefer to leave handwriting to its own curriculum. But we do include just a little bit of, you know, tracing and learning about letter formation as a way of learning the letter and as a way of, you know, memorizing the letter and memorizing its sound. So uh, I would not look to this if your child is ready for handwriting, just get a, a handwriting specific workbook for them is what I would recommend. I do include some mazes. This is very self-serving. My son is obsessed with mazes. So <laughs> we do have the occasional maze throughout here. And I have just a few exercises occasionally bringing attention to the to the difference and the importance of using capital letters. We talk about using capital letters at the beginning of names. So when are we using uppercase letters at the beginning of a name? Just gently introducing this idea of, you know, to, you know talking to kids about why do we have these uppercase letters and lowercase letters anyways. Um, I like this one. We have asking silly questions with the ah sound. Can you act like an alligator? Different, uh, uh, you know, word uh, questions featuring some of those words. We have a cutout activity here that's very easy because we haven't really learned any of the letters yet. Um, this page is repeated a couple times, maybe four times or so throughout the first half of the alphabet. We're including proverbs, classic proverbs and sayings that feature a certain letter and we're taking time to color the letters, but we're also seeing the letters in the context of words and a greater sentence and getting to talk about the meaning of some of these classic proverbs. Then here, this is our choose your own adventure page that it's not for every letter, but it's repeated several times throughout the unit. Then choose, choose an adventurer that you could imagine being an acrobat or an astronaut. And it gives you some ideas of what you could do to, you know, play, play like this character and learn about this adventurer today. Then that was just our letter A. I am going to just real quick show you the Spanish version, which at the time of filming this video is not yet released because it still needs some proofing, but I had some questions about how the Spanish version is going to differ. So I'm gonna give you a quick look at that. See, we're not talking about ants anymore because ant does not start with a in Spanish. It does not start with the letter A. So we're doing avión, which is a good word that begins with the, the letter A in Spanish. We don't talk about the letter A having multiple sounds here, as we did in the English page, because the letter A does not have multiple sounds in Spanish. So we have that. Similar page, but adjusted to fit the, to fit what is, what words actually start with A in Spanish. So some things are the same, but it's always changed to fit you know, the phonics. So we, some things are changed more significantly than others. Uh, it just depends on the letter <laughs> and what, what words we have that start with it. So we do have, again, we have the proverb, but it's a totally different proverb or a totally different saying, sana sana colita de rana, which I'm pretty sure my Hispanic uh, viewers are going to recognize that one immediately. And here we did get to have the same adventures because they do start with the same letter. So I just wanted to give a little quick look into um, that because I had had some questions there. Then back, I'm just going to give you a quick flip through. You'll see, you'll be able to see that some of these pages are just the same. Some are something different. I love this illustration. My sister did such a good job when I asked for kind of like a cut out. Um, I'll be able to look inside a boat and see different letters. I'm going on a little cruise there. 
This is a listening activity. Listen carefully to instructions and follow the instructions. We do have the occasional picture study. So this is one thing that would require some colored ink and is heavier ink usage, but it doesn't happen super often throughout. We have cut out sorting activities in many different forms here. One thing I wanted to point out, I purposely choose to include the word the word written out on picture cards when we're having sorting activities. I find that many curriculums don't include the word, but I purposefully do because we're not trying to, tr like I think there's this idea of, oh, the kid is just gonna be able to look at the letter and they'll guess it or they'll know it. But I'm, like, I'm not trying to trick my preschooler here. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get them to recognize a letter and connect it with a sound. So I want them to have this exposure of, oh, okay, B ball, I'm seeing the B right there. I'm making this connection between seeing the B and hearing the B. We have that. We have a little scavenger hunt for real life, uh, you know, real real life things around your house that begin with a B, B sound. And so, just giving you a little, little, little glimpse into what you can expect. We're adding spines to a cactus right there. I think this is your, your, your doing something in the kitchen with foods that begin with C. A little play. We've got another maze for my maze loving boy. We've got another adventurer page. And I would recommend not proof, um, not binding the ch the child's student workbook when you're doing it. I'm just gonna keep all of these pages in a big folder, and I'll pull out the next couple pages we're doing that day. Um, and I think that's gonna work very easily for us. So. I hope that this is giving you a good look inside. Um, definitely ask me if you have any questions, but you'll be able to find this on our website for a very affordable price. And part two will release as soon as I can get it ready. All right, I'll be seeing you next time.